Christian Assembly, Malta Overcomer's Voice, and I'm Pastor Jai with the Alternatives. Bringing the gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, into the comfort of your home. Thank you for joining us on this program, and thank you for connecting with us from time to time. May the Lord bless you mightily. Today I'm speaking, as you have heard, on the subject I've titled, Winning by Faith. Winning by Faith. To win in life, it takes faith. To have victory over every circumstances that we face in life, it takes faith. The Bible did not, God did not promise us that we will not go through turbulent times. God did not tell us that we will not go through difficult times. As a matter of fact, if you look at all the heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says, by faith, through faith, they overcome. By faith or through faith. Just, just read that, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 today from verse from verse 1, just read it all the way to verse 38 or so, and you'll see, by faith, Moses, by faith, Moses, uh, Abraham, by faith, Sarah, through faith, through faith. Faith is the victory that overcome the world. I've said it to us many times, and I'm going to repeat that again today. Faith is the only currency that releases the blessings, whatever blessing we're looking for in heaven, faith is the only currency you need to tap from the resources of heaven. Our prayers are important. What we do is important. But the Bible says in 2 Peter that, you know, add to your virtue, faith. Add to faith your virtue. So faith is the foundation. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. If you go to any supermarket and you want to buy anything today and you go there and say, I want to buy something and I don't have money, they will tell you, get out of this place. I mean, this is not a charity shop. So the same, when you go to God for anything, to have victory, to, have, to, have, to overcome circumstances, to overcome challenges, to overcome situations, faith is the currency that you present to God. God looks at our heart. He sees if there is faith. If we have faith to believe, Jesus said we will have whatsoever we want from God. Faith gives us victory in our personal life. Faith gives us victory in our professional life. And I know what I'm talking about because that has, I've used that many times in my professional life. Faith gives us victory spiritually when we face the opposi opposition and all the barriers of the enemy of demons in our lives. Faith is what gives us victory. Faith is the core subject in the kingdom. If you study any other subject in the kingdom of God, and you, are, you don't study carefully and embrace, as a matter of fact, faith is the key, the core subject in the kingdom of God. That's why we are described in Acts chapter 6, verse 7, that we are the faith people. If you give me Acts 6, he said, that a large number of the priests became obedient to the faith. So Christianity is called the faith, the faith people. So faith is what gives us victory over fear, over fear. Fear is the opposite of faith, not doubt. Doubt is the result of fear. Fear is the opposite. Wherever there is fear in our life, fear of tomorrow, faith is what we need. A lot of people right now are living under fear in the church, fear of the future, fear of the pandemic. Fear of what is happening around the world. I don't know what is going to happen with my job. I don't know what is going to happen with my business. I don't know. I'm hearing this. I'm hearing that. A lot of people are under the torment of fear because of coronavirus and the pandemic and whatever the world is going. The government doesn't know what to do. It's all trial and error. The World Health Organization is all trial and error. Nobody seems to know how to tackle this problem. And even with vaccination, the future is still not very bright for so many. And this is why we need faith. Fearful for the future. Some of us are fearful because of the future of, our, of their children. Fearful of what, how this end is going to end. So many people are turning to other stuff. And they are neglecting Christ. We are neglecting faith, which is the key 
that guarantees victory in our life. So it's important for us to know this. First John chapter four, first John chapter five, verse four. The Bible says, uh, "It is faith is the victory that brings us above every circumstances." If you believe all things are possible, no matter the storms of life, no matter the waves of the sea, no matter the extent and the loud voice of coronavirus and pandemic, no matter the challenge we are going through in this world right now, faith is what gives us the victory to overcome. Jesus said in his word, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. And we must understand that faith is what gives us the victory over every circumstances of life. Many believers are subject to prescription drugs. I was talking to somebody, I was hearing somebody the other day that, you know, because of all this problem, I don't even know now, I'm beginning to take prescription for depression. Why? Why? Why are you depressed? Why are you dejected? Why are you sad? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there is time for everything. There is a season under the sun. And this season will pass by. Summer season now, we are, in, we are now, today we change the clock. We're going into spring. We've gone into winter season. Cold, gloomy, dark. Now the days are getting brighter. Coronavirus will pass. The torment, the test. The situation you are now is not going to be permanent in the name of Jesus. Therefore, you don't need to take the, 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 the depression pills. Another one told me I went to my, to my doctor because of my son and they subscribed depression pill. That's the only solution they have there. If you go to, to psychiatric, they will send you to psychiatric world. If you go to doctor, they will send you to COVID world. If you go to Jesus, he will take out of Zion that shall be deliverance. He will bring deliverance in your life. He will bring comfort in your life. He will bring solution in your life. He will speak the word in season. The Bible says, as Jesus was spoken, many were being healed. So as I'm speaking to you, be healed from your depression state in Jesus' name. So you need to understand that victory is what we need to overcome the world. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 6 and Hebrews chapter 13 Verse 5, Jesus, God said to us through the voice of the Holy Spirit, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Has he forsaken you? Because of what you are going through, you think God has forsaken you? Joseph, we just talked about the story of Joseph from those eight till he became the prince of the world. Many people would have thought God has forsaken him. Listen to me, God said I will never leave you. Now, another scripture, if you give me Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2, it said, you may go through waters, you may go through fire. I will be with you. So you must be comfortable and confident. You must be comfortable and confident in that scripture because it is the key to our victory in any given circumstances. It is the key. It is the key. It is the key, the key to victory in any given circumstances. Key to winning every battle is our faith. Key to win every challenges we are facing is our faith. Whosoever is born of God has overcome the world. The world may be pressing you. Coronavirus may be pressing you. Pandemic may be around you. Everything may be coming left, right, and center. Whoever is born, are you born of God? Are you born again? God says you have already an overcomer. And this is what should be driving us and, and helping us to move on in life. Everything that God will do in your life and in my life on this side of eternity is on the wings of faith. Everything that God will do in your life and in my life on this side of eternity is on the wing of faith. Because faith is the currency heaven recognized. No matter what you are going through, my friend, my brother, my sister, 
no matter what you are going through, faith is the currency we need. I want you to type on the chat there, faith is the currency. Faith is to be sure of what we hope for. Faith is to be sure of what we hope for, but certain of what we cannot see. Faith is being sure of what you're hoping for and certain even though you cannot see it in the physical. We must understand that's how faith works. It is believing God for who he says he is and what he says he can do from his word. Circumstances, situation may change. Weather will change. Whatever, tomorrow may change, plans may change, but God will never change. He is unchangeable. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 3, uh, 6, uh, even 13, 8, that's what we read in the Bible. He will never change. Faith is believing God for who he says he is, no matter the circumstances, no matter the situation. In Romans chapter 1, verse 17, the Bible says, The just shall live by their faith. This is Paul reminding us. He said, The just shall live by their faith. Habakkuk 2 says, The just shall live by faith. Paul says, The just shall live by their faith, not by other people's faith. You live by faith. Your faith will make you whole. That's what Jesus said in, in Mark's gospel. So we understand that faith is believing God, that God can do whatever he says he will do. Now listen to this. I want to rephrase that. Faith is not believing God. It's not believing that God can do it. But faith is believing that God will do it even right now. Faith is not believing that God can do it. That's okay. Everybody can say God can do it. But do you believe that he will do it even right now? Now, that is faith. Faith is now. Faith is current. Faith is not futuristic. Faith is now. Now, faith is the substance of the things we hope for. Now, do you believe that God can solve that situation? Do you believe that God can change that story? Do you believe that God can find you another job which is better than the one you lose? Do you believe that God can change the story in your relationship, in your marriage? Do you believe that God can change Whatever it is that is becoming like a burden to you, do you think God can take them away and replace them now? That's faith. Faith is not believing that God can do it. Faith is believing that God will do it now. This is very, very important. This is why the angel said to Mary in Luke 1 verse 31, he said, he is with God, all things are possible. Listen to me. The moment for me, the moment I realized that scripture, it placed me on a path where circumstances and situation have ceased. I've ceased. I've ceased to dominate my life. Because if I believe that nothing is impossible for God, I am walking in the spiritual, irrespective of the natural situation. Because I know whom I believe that he is able to do. Whatever I'm going through will not be my destiny. So I hang on. I stay with God. And faith is the key that gives us the victory over the enemy. So I know that whatever the situation or circumstances with my faith in God, nothing can be impossible for me. People say to me, Pastor, what of if I try and it doesn't happen or it doesn't work? I say to them, well, what of if I try and it work? If you go with the attitude that I don't know what is going to happen if I do this, then nothing will happen. But if you go with the attitude that, listen, I'm going to trust God. God cannot see a man or a woman in faith, applying faith without standing up from his throne and coming down to rescue them. 
in the midst of the sea, in the midst of Paul was being taken to Rome, in the midst of those turmoil in the sea, Paul says, I heard God said to me that none of you will lose your life. And the whole boat scattered, and they said, the Bible says, some of them are hanging on woods and piece of the boat. And none of them, none of them, none of them lose your life. It's faith. Experts, listen to this, experts, well-grounded experts build the Titanic. And the Titanic sank. All the technology were in place, and the Titanic sank. Unless the Lord build the house, they that labor are laboring in vain. But Noah, without knowledge of building an ark, built in faith, and the world was saved. Faith is the key. Faith is the key to your victory. Forget the circumstance, forget what you hear, forget what you see. Hold on to faith. Hold on to the confession of your faith. Hold on to it. All the experts build the Titanic. They are still looking for the, for the remains of Titanic today. But Noah built the ark and it came rain and turbulent. If you will secure yourself in true faith in the promises of God, Jesus said in Mark chapter 9 verse 23, if you can believe, if you can be, it's conditional. It's based on you. It's based on what you think. It's based on what you receive. It's based on how you receive the word of God. If you believe that what I am sharing with you, Jesus said, if you believe, if your faith is in place, nothing is impossible to him that believes. You know what? It, this is contrary to how People perceive things are done in this side of the world. This side of the world, we are told, believing is seeing. No, seeing is believing. You've got to see because before you believe. That's what the world says. But in the kingdom of God, we believe first before we receive. You believe first. I've just lost my job. That's an opportunity. So my, my faith comes in, okay, well, I lost that job. Maybe that's an opportunity for God to give me a better job. And you begin to see yourself walking into a better job. You begin to see your business growing again. You begin to see your relationship. It's crumbling, but you see things happening. You see things happening with your children. You see things happening with your wife. You see things happening with your husband. You see things happening with your finances. You see it before you receive it. Jesus said, if you can believe it, it will happen. If you are praying the way the world is open, eh, coronavirus, eh, you know, uh, 40 people died today, eh, 360, you have you checked the times? How many COVID? Eh, 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 eh. If you watch TV, if you that coronavirus, coronavirus, the only thing that I know, corona is beer. Corona beer. I, I, I found out the other day that it's a beer called corona. I wonder if they are drinking coronavirus. <laughs> no, you know, I just came across that anyway. So, um, so if you believe all things are possible, faith is to be sure of what we hope for, but certain of what we cannot see. We're hoping for it, but we have faith. But we're certain we're going to get it. That's faith. Faith is not, do you think, I, 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 do, I hope so. That's how people say, how long is this corona? I hope so. I hope so. You can hope. But are you certain you're going to get what you are seeing? Jesus said, the law of the kingdom is you see, you believe first before you receive. This is why faith is supreme in overcoming every issue of life. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, Paul was telling us, above all things. Now, if you read carefully Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 12, he says, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. When he came to verse 16, he said, above all these things that I've mentioned to you, pick up. Again, it's a responsibility. Take. It's your responsibility. Get hold of it. It's my responsibility. Take the shield of faith. Above everything we will ever need, he says, take the shield of faith. This is why no matter what is going on around you, Faith is going to shield you. 
Faith is going to keep you going. Faith is going to keep you motivated. Faith is going to keep you excited. Faith is going to bring you in the place where you always be calm and relaxed. And crisis here and there, you are not moved. You are not perturbed. You are not disturbed. You are not worried. You know that whatever is going on, I'm okay. Type there, no matter the circumstances, I will break through. And that is very, very important. No, that is very, very important, rather. No matter the circumstances, you will break through. You will overcome. You will see the end of the crisis. And your better day, your latter day shall be better than your beginning. That is what God wants us to know here. So faith is supreme. Hashtag supreme. Faith, hashtag supreme. Faith is supreme. Faith is supreme. And God will always honor our faith. God will always honor wherever your faith is. If you look through the Hebrews, catalogs of Hebrews, as I've mentioned in the beginning, you will notice the phrase, by faith, through faith. By faith, through faith. I want you to read it. I want you to read it. Just, just look at it. There are more than 10 times you say by faith, through faith, or by faith, or through faith. By faith, or through faith. So this is very, very important for us to know that it is through faith. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Paul Peter tells us, add to your faith. So faith is the foundation. And then you begin to add every other thing onto it. But if you are adding things and you don't have faith, Remember, faith is a currency that draws attention of heaven. So, faith makes a person go through crises if he or she knows the end. Let me repeat that. Faith makes us go through crises as if we know the end of the problem. I know that this crisis will not kill me in Jesus' name. I know that there is end of this crisis. No matter how WHO or our government cannot see the end, but I know that this crisis, and I'm telling you in Jesus' name, this crisis will not kill you in Jesus' name. You will come out of it better. We will come out of it better. We will come out of it triumphantly. Then when we look back to 2020 and 2021, where God will take us next, if we can hold on in faith, it will surprise even your enemy. The Bible says in Psalm 23, prepare a table before me even in the presence of my enemy. That's what God is going to do for you in Jesus' name. Just hold on in faith. Hold on in faith. One of my favorite scriptures is Psalm, Psalm 91 verse 3b. It says, surely, type hashtag surely, hashtag surely, he will deliver me from Pestilence. It's a noisome pestilence. And that's what is happening around the world. Blah, 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 blah. Everywhere you go, wherever you call coronavirus, you say, surely God will shield me from this pestilence. And he will shield you in Jesus' name. There are three things I want us to look here if we are going to enjoy the promise of God. Number one, we must believe that this promise is for you. Believe it. It's not for David. It's not for Daniel. It's not for Ch Ch Chiku or Pepo. It's not for Rita. It's for you. It's for you. If you notice the way I have read that scripture, and that's what I do all the time, the scripture says, surely I will deliver you. But I always read it, surely he will deliver me. If you remember last year when this coronavirus started, we were still in the church, and I told us to read that all the time. And we read Psalm 91 for the whole month. And I always tell you, don't forget when you read that, you're reading a love letter to yourself. That's what God says. You're reading the promises of God to yourself. If you continue to read it, surely he will, I will deliver you. Who is you? Who is you? It's your Bible. It's your God. It's yourself. You are so change that. Refresh it. It says, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. Joshua 1.8. It said, Surely he, he will deliver me. When you read it in that light, you will see some kind of, you know, your back will go, your shoulder will go backward and your, your chin will go up. 
because you now seen it that listen, this is for me. And that's how you make the Bible real, real in your life. So we must understand that you must, we must, we must believe that that promise is for us. Number two, we must trust that it will work. There might be 500 COVID cases today or 1,000 COVID cases tomorrow or 2,000 COVID cases tomorrow. You must believe that 1,000 may fall on your right side. 10,000 on the other hand, it will not come near you. Believe that it will work for you. And that you put it into action. Number three, you must live your life with this understanding every single day. You still take all the caution, all the, all the things we are told to do. Wash your hands, wear your mask, social distance, blah, blah, blah. You still do that. You don't do that if they, if they arrest you 3,000 euros you will pay. You still do that. But that, that's, not, that's just a joke now. But for real, you still do that. But your trust is not in that. Your confidence is in what God has said. And this is how we overcome. As I close... How do we manifest this faith in crisis? Psalm 23. Like David, we must be so confident in God and his word. We must be so confident in God and his word. Listen to me that people will think you are just a crazy individual. God conscious, God centered his word around you that it permeates your thoughts and it, it irradiates in your action. We must be confident in God and in his word. In doing so, we express our confidence in what we do. We express that in confidence in what we do, how we do it on a daily basis in the midst of coronavirus. No matter how many companies are closing down, no matter how many news or how many numbers of cases you are hearing, no matter how many situations during this crisis, like David, David was a man that was born in crisis. We don't know who his mother is. We don't know his mother was not mentioned as the wife of Jesse. Bible scholars have told us maybe he was born out of wedlock. He was born in crisis. He was hated by his father. He was thrown into crisis at his early age. David understand what crisis is. He fought battle and won them with unwavering faith in a teenage year, all the way till he was 40, 80 before he passed to glory. David was a man after God's own heart. His faith in God rules out of him in every the, the way he speaks confidently in every situation. And that's how we, we know that we have faith. Because when we speak, people can see the confidence in the way we speak. Not bragging, but confidence in the ability of God. David said in, in, verse, he said in verse 4 of, uh, of um, Psalm 23, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, that's confidence. Like the three Hebrew boys. Even though I walk through, even though coronavirus is killing everybody around me, even though job is taken, even though no opportunity, even though I know I will not fear it, he will be with me. Verse 6 is, is the key now. It says, surely, hashtag surely on the chat there, Psalm 23, hashtag surely. Your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. Not when things are going on, I'm okay, I'm laughing and jolly. But when things are not going well, I'm shaking and, like, like, and my tail is under my legs. No, 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 no. All the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Let me close with this scripture. So the key there is confident. Confident. Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 10, I believe verse 38 says, Don't throw away your confidence. 
you can if you can put that on the screen for me uh, hebrews 10 i think i think it's verse 38 he said throw away do not throw away your confidence there is a great reward so we must understand how do i prove my faith how do i manifest my faith during this pandemic confident in the ability of god knowing that he is who he says he is and he will do whatever he says he will do he said cast away cast not away your confidence therefore which has a great recompense of reward hebrews 6 verse 11 and 12 and we close we must put that into action here he says, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence. Hashtag diligence on the chart. And full of assurance of hope. Hashtag hope. He says hope to the end. Hope to the end. Hashtag hope to the end. Verse 12. Do not be slothful. But followers of them through faith, through faith and patience, we will inherit the promise of God. So number one, it takes diligence to make our faith work. And number two, we cannot afford to be slothful. Slothful in that context is talking about not taking it seriously. If you don't take the subject of faith seriously, then we will not inherit the reward or that God has for us in the Bible. Only through faith we enjoy the promises and the protection of God. As I close, 